Mrs. R's Garden by Radwa Ashur, translated by me, Kay Hakenen. We will skip over the introduction, which describes Mrs. R's garden and its blooming flowers, which she planted, watered, and tended morning and evening, sparing no effort. We will begin directly with the doorbell. She opened the door. No sooner did number four see her than he said, why, mama? He did not finish his sentence, sobbing loudly. She tried to pull him inside, but he remained nailed to the threshold as if she were inviting him into a trap or as if he could not come in unless he finished his sentence. He started again without finishing. On the third try, he was able to complete it. Mama, Mama R, why do you teach me wrong things? She felt so guilty that she forgot to hand him a handkerchief to wipe his snot. She said to herself, what have you done, R? Did you mark a direct object nominative? Put the subject in the accusative? Has exhaustion brought you to the point of making mistakes in third grade grammar lessons? Number four's crying and his snot reclaimed her attention. She took the boy by the hand to the bathroom, asked him to wash his face. She drew him into the kitchen and put on the door the red sign with bold black letters, emergency. It was unusual for her to put up the sign at this hour. The time for the emergency sign was daily at eight in the evening, after dinner. The little ones were amazed and piled up behind the door. She opened the door suddenly. She had guessed that would happen. They flew away like leaves caught in the storm. R said decisively, everyone to his job. She almost turned her back, then decided to remind them of their tasks. Number one, change number eight's diaper. Number two, set the table. Number three, go over the lessons of numbers five and six. She slammed the door shut to emphasize the emergency. She turned to number four and assailed him with a question. The grammar lesson? What grammar lesson? Didn't we make a mistake in grammar? We didn't make a mistake. The teacher gave me 10 out of 10. She breathed deeply, then said chidingly, what did I teach you wrong? The boy returned to sobbing. She handed him a handkerchief. He wiped his snot. Didn't you tell me to take a rose to the teacher for Mother's Day? I did. That was a mistake. Did the teacher scold you? She didn't scold me, but she didn't smile. Maybe she was tired. No, Mama R. The teacher likes expensive gifts. A boy gave her a gold ring, and she smiled. A girl gave her a boucheron, and she kissed her. What's this boucheron? a kind of expensive perfume. How do you know about it? The teacher lifted up the bottle and said, this perfume is excellent and expensive. Its name is Boucheron, and children, I especially like this kind. But a rose is also a precious gift. The boy returned to crying. She called his attention to the handkerchief in his hand. That's wrong. The teacher put the perfume and the ring in her purse carefully and put the other gifts in a bag and forgot the rose. Later, she felt if the rose fell off her desk and she didn't notice. And when the bell rang and she left the room, the kids got up and ran to the door and trampled the rose. Number four opened his school bag and took out the crushed rose. He held it up to his mother's face. R was at a loss. The boy stood up and said firmly, Mama, Please, next time, don't teach me things wrong. He left her tongue-tied and went out of the kitchen. I noticed that she had remained tongue-tied longer than she should have. She would think about it later, after the children had gone to bed. She looked at the schedule fastened to the refrigerator door. Sunday, March 21, 1999. She looked at her watch and jumped from her seat. She wasn't keeping the schedule. She served the food. The children sat down to lunch. They finished their meal. Number two cleared the table. Number one washed the dishes. She allowed number four to spend half an hour drawing before beginning his homework. R sat down to teach number three arithmetic. Number seven woke up and R brought him in and nursed him while continuing to explain the lesson. She interrupted it twice because the twins, numbers five and six, were crying and she had to pacify them. This is not a representative sample of R's days during the school year. The incident of the rose is still an isolated incident, and other incidents do not occur daily. Even the incident of the rose was linked to something else that was lovely. 
Wasn't the 21st of March Mother's Day? None of the children mentioned it. They forgot, said Ara to herself a bit sadly. They did not forget. They waited for their father to come home in the evening, gathered around her, gave her a present, kissed her, and sang to her. Then number four brought out the picture he had drawn. He presented it to her. He threw himself on her and gave her a big hug and said, I love you very much, Mama R. Even if you teach me things wrong, I love you. And when you say something wrong, I find out for myself that it's wrong. So it's not important.